The Marvel Comics mutants can be classified based on their capabilities. These classifications refer to levels at which the mutant can operate. The strongest level is known as the Omega level, which he used to categorize mutants with no upper limit of their powers. But have you ever thought of what lies after that? Or if there are mutants stronger than Omega level? The answer is yes, and they fall under the category of beyond Omega level. In today's video, we will be exploring our list of mutants with powers beyond the Omega level. Some characters are classified as beyond Omega level mutants in various fandom pages, but due to their unfathomable amount of power, they might be crossing Omega level. So without further delay, let us begin. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. Franklin Richards. Created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Franklin Richards was first introduced to the Marvel Universe in Fantastic Four Annual Issue 6, published in August 1968. Franklin was born to Reed Richards and Susan Storm from the Fantastic Four. While conceiving Franklin, there were immense complications as he kept draining vast amounts of energy from his mother Susan. In order to save his child and wife, Reed traveled to the Negative Zone along with the Human Torch and the Thing to obtain the antimatter energy from a cosmic rod that belonged to one of the most dreadful inhabitants of the Zone, Annihilation. After successfully obtaining the antimatter energy, Reed managed to bring Susan's blood under control, letting her give birth to a healthy child. Honoring Susan's father, Franklin Storm, and Reed's best friend, Benjamin J. Grimm, they named the child Franklin Benjamin Richards. Franklin was born a mutant, but unlike most, he manifested his powers way before puberty. His powers were first shown when the Frightful Four defeated the Fantastic Four, taking them one at a time. Franklin used his new powers to awaken the Thing, which eventually led to the victory of the Fantastic Four. His psionic abilities began increasing exponentially. In Fantastic Four issue 245, published on May 18th, 1982, Franklin used his powers to age himself to maturity. As Susan returned from an interview, she sensed danger after her solenoid belt buckle failed to bring the elevator to the main floor. She frantically went up to find other members of the Fantastic Four lying unconscious. She encountered a grown man restraining the human torch, tossing him aside, and trying to hold him back. After a big struggle, Susan realized that the stranger was none other than her son Franklin, who had shut the mind of Mr. Fantastic, the Human Torch, and the Thing. At some point after the manipulation of Annihilus, Franklin's potency was released to his full strength. Owing to fear of having his son kill every living entity on the planet by releasing his psionic energy, Reed was forced to send Franklin into comatose. Franklin could create his pocket dimensions and tap into events happening in any corner of the universe. After the death of Galactus' storyline, Abraxas managed to escape from his prison and sought to destroy all of reality using his ultimate nullifier. Franklin revived Galactus and helped him kill Abraxas. He could also see universes under his blanket before sleep. With that said, Franklin is definitely a nigh omnipotent being and can be tagged as a beyond Omega level mutant. Vulcan. Vulcan was the title adopted by none other than Gabriel Summers. Created by writer Ed Brubacher and artist Trevor Hersene, Gabriel was the youngest sibling of the Summers family after Scott and Alex Summers and was introduced in X-Men Deadly Genesis issue 1, published in November 2005. During his prenatal stage, during his prenatal stage, his mother, Catherine Summers, was abducted by Deken, a member of the royal family of the Shi'ar Empire, and placed in his harem. His father, Christopher Summers, attempted to murder Deken, but failed following which Catherine was murdered in front of him. They ripped unborn Gabriel from Catherine's womb and placed him in an incubation acceleration chamber to make a slave out of him. Gabriel was artificially aged to the prime of adolescence and sent to Earth to serve the Red, Deken associate on Earth. At some point, he managed to escape and was taken refuge by Moira McTaggart, who taught him how to use his nascent powers. Charles Xavier, during an encounter with Gabriel, learned about his connection with his former student Scott Summers and recruited him him to be a part of his X-Men. Gabriel took the codename Vulcan from one of the characters in Roman mythology. Vulcan, along with Petra, Darwin, and Sway, was then assigned to rescue the original X-Men from Krakoa, the Living Island. Although the original X-Men managed to escape, Vulcan and his team were caught up on the island and seemingly killed by Krakoa. While Charles Xavier managed to alter everyone's mind to forget the recent loss, Vulcan and Darwin managed to survive by combining their powers. They were flung into deep space along with the entire Krakoa by Magneto's daughter Polaris. Remaining inactive for several years, Vulcan was awakened by a massive power surge owing to the events of the M-Day. Following this, Vulcan slowly started demonstrating the true extent of his powers. He returned to Earth to exact revenge on the X-Men and even killed the mutant Banshee. With memories of his mother's death, he charged at the Shi'ar Empire to kill Deken. And upon finding him comatose, he took his revenge on the then current ruler, Deken's sister, Lilandra. He eventually ruled Shi'ar with an iron fist. His powers reached such high levels that no force could remove him from his place in the Shi'ar Empire. Being the youngest brother of two alpha-level mutants, Scott and Alex Summers, Gabriel was undoubtedly an omega-level mutant. 
important, but as stated in the comics, his might have extended further. Following the events of the M-Day, Emma Frost, who is considered to be at Omega level, discovered Vulcan's energy while searching for Charles Xavier via the Cerebro. This energy signature was so overwhelming that it broke down Cerebro. Upon reaching Earth, Vulcan shut down the synapsis of Rachel Summers, who was also concerned to be at Omega level. These incidents prompted Charles Xavier and Scott Summer to speculate that Vulcan's powers were way beyond Omega level. At some point, Vulcan sought to rule the universe and went on conquering other planets. When he arrived on Kree, he encountered Black Bolt, who nearly defeated him until he used the true extent of his powers to create a hole in space and time. He even absorbed Adam Warlock's powers and rendered him into a mortal being. With all the crazy doings, Vulcan is certainly a beyond Omega level mutant. Nate Gray, aka X-Man Created by Jeff Lebb and Steve, Nathaniel Gray, aka Nate Gray, aka The X-Man, was introduced in X-Man Issue 1, published in January 1995. Nate was from Earth-295, a reality in the multiverse created using the Macron Crystal. A powerful mutant named Legion from Earth-616 went back in time and accidentally killed his own father, Charles Xavier, creating a paradox for his very own existence. This was solved with the help of the Macron Crystal and the reality of Earth-295 was created. Apocalypse ruled the world while Magneto took the initiative and created the X-Men. One of Apocalypse's horsemen, Mr. Sinister, eventually went against Apocalypse and planned on creating a perfect mutant capable enough to bring him. Acquiring the DNA of Scott Summers and Jean Grey, Sinister artificially created Nate Grey. Nate aged rapidly within Sinister's genetic tanks and was shown to be 17 years old when he first appeared. Sinister placed Nate in one of the slave pens to hide out of plain sight. Nate was later helped to escape all thanks to the subversive raids on Sinister's pens by Cyclops. He ended up being in the care of Forge and other mutant outcasts that helped humans, while a wandering traveler, Essex, who was actually sinister, kept an eye on him. In a slow process, Essex manipulated the outcasts to investigate one of the Apocalypse's factories, which Nate destroyed. Apocalypse sensed Nate's powers and then sent his minion Domino to track Nate and recruit or kill him. Nate stopped Domino by wiping out Domino's mind, but it was too late to stop Essex from killing his father figure. Forge Nate killed Essex and finally decided to confront Apocalypse. Apocalypse sent his son Holocaust to battle Nate, who impaled him with a shard of the Macron Crystal. This impact caused both Holocaust and Nate to be sent into the reality of Earth-616. Although Nate Gray is placed amongst the list of Omega-level mutants, his capabilities often bring confusion as to whether he is beyond Omega-level. As a child, he had casually wiped off a wide stretch of the tree without notice. He was also the one who had accidentally created a psionic ability within Charles Xavier, which eventually gave rise to Onslaught. On Earth-616, when Charles Xavier had tried to reach Nate Gray in the astral form, Nate pulled him out of the astral realm and destroyed his projection. At some point, under the influence of Madeline Pryor, Nate destroyed the entire city of Quito, Ecuador. While he was in his mutant shaman phase, he could travel between realities with his own power, and if all that is not enough, Nate even brought himself back to life. Matthew Malloy. Matthew Malloy is from Earth 14923 and lived with his wife Jules in Charleston, South Carolina. Created by Brian Michael Bendis and Chris Anka, Matthew's life was a pretty tragic and traumatizing one. He was introduced in Uncanny X-Men Volume 3, Issue 23, published in July 2014 in the 31st issue of the same series, he ceased to exist. Earth in this reality was facing a Skrull invasion and an energy blast from a Skrull ship vaporized Jules. Matthew was shocked and grief-stricken at the moment when a Skrull agent appeared before him. As he was about to shoot Matthew, a shield appeared and blew off the scroll's head from its body. After a year, Matthew ran into his former sister-in-law, Alana, who confronted him and told him that she considered him like a brother. Conversing with Alana, Matthew's thoughts about his lost wife rekindled and caused him unimaginable trauma. He reached his emotional breaking point and his mutant powers manifested, which destroyed everything around including Alana. As Matthew stood there with guilt and despair, Maria Hill sent one of her strike teams to take him down. Unfortunately, they were all obliterated after Matthew Matthew released his powers. Matthew later teleported to Jean Grey school after being attacked by S.H.I.E.L.D.'s air strike team. Emma Frost confronted him, but Matthew's fears made him release his energy and kill Emma Frost. With no other option in hand, Tempest used her powers to go back in time, prevent Matthew's parents from meeting, thereby preventing him from coming into existence. Matthew Malloy was considered the strongest mutant in his reality. According to the words of Dr. McCoy, Matthew's powers far exceeded Omega level. Even Charles Xavier considered him to be the largest energy source existing. His power reading surpassed Cerebro's calibration. When S.H.I.E.L.D.'s airstrike team attacked him, they created a blast that killed Cyclops and magic, but Matthew resurrected himself and teleported to Jean Grey School. Mr. M. 
Absalon Zabardin Mercator, aka Mr. M, first appeared in District X, Issue 2, published in August 2004. Created by David Hine and artist David Yarden, Absalon first manifested his mutant abilities when he was a kid in Belgium. To save his cousin Ruben from a bully, he turned the bully inside out and left him to die in the woods. Absalon was later sent to the US to live with his relatives. His life in the United States was very lonesome. He had no friends and earned his living by repairing electronic gadgets with his powers. He stayed in his apartment throughout the day and left at night. His only close friend was Hannah Levy. Meanwhile, a mutant named Toad Boy was kidnapped and his secretions were sold as designer drugs at clubs. Consumed by everyone, the mutant survived but the humans died a very painful death. Absalon helped the kidnapped boy return to his mother while Daniel Shacky Kaufman, the owner of nightclubs Daniel's Inferno and Wildcat Club, went looking for him. When Daniel's men confronted Absalon, he phased him into one of his men and killed him unintentionally. Later, when Izzy's daughter was shot accidentally by her own brother, Absalon Absalon tried healing the young girl, but when Izzy and Bishop arrived, they assumed Absalon to be attacking her. Bishop tried absorbing Absalon's energy, but then he realized that it was too much for him to contain. Frustrated with a set of events, Absalon thought of destroying Mutant Town, but the danger was averted with the help of Laura, the illusionist. Laura's illusion tricked Absalon into believing that Mutant Town was destroyed, while Bishop managed to redirect the destructive energy into the atmosphere. Absalon was later shot in the head, but his powers saved him. Absalon, aka Mr. M, has been showcased as a godlike entity. He had saved many lives with his powers and was shown to possess an unlimited transmutational power to alter or change the molecular structure of any object around him. He could transform matter into energy and also revert it back. He could create nuclear explosions from thin air, presumably because he could operate at a subatomic level which justifies nuclear fission and fusion. His godlike abilities also let him activate and deactivate the X-Factor in other mutants. He could also control metabolisms in living organisms as he was shown accelerating growth in plants. After the events of House of M, Mr. M was amongst the 198 mutants who managed to retain their powers and abilities. His healing abilities were not confined to just regeneration, he could also resurrect himself from death. Like other Omega level and beyond Omega level mutants, Mr. M could also warp reality. Although in most sources, Mr. M is classified as an Omega level mutant, his extraordinary abilities were not showcased to their full extent, and going by his attributes, Mr. M could possibly surpass Omega level if he wanted to. Number 6. Legion As mentioned earlier, Legion was Charles Xavier's son and an extremely powerful mutant. Created by Chris Claremont and Bill Seinkiewicz, David Haller, aka The Legion's Presence, was teased in the New Mutants issue 25, published in November 1984, as one of the mutants' names present in Wyra McTaggart's notes. He was later introduced in New Mutants issue number 26, published in December 1984. At some point, when Charles was in Israel, he had an affair with a woman named Gabriella Haller. Unaware of her pregnancy, Charles left Israel leaving her. Gabriella gave birth to a child and raised him without revealing the truth about his father. She named the new child David Haller, who was also born a mutant. Later during Charles' search for new mutants, he found David and recognized his connection. Gabriella had moved with her to Paris and worked as a member of the Israel Diplomatic Services. During her stay, a group of terrorists in the hunt for Israelis invaded her home and killed her husband and David's stepfather, Daniel Shomron. All of this happened in front of David's eyes, which was enough to catalyze his psionic abilities. David and incinerated every terrorist brain and began to feel the pain and terror of victims who had died at the hands of the terrorists. He also absorbed the consciousness of the leader of the terrorist group, Jamal Karami, in his mind. David was a soft and gentle person and terrible trauma divided his mind into different alter egos, each of which possessed different psionic abilities. Karami, being trapped in his, learned about the child's past and tried integrating the fragments into David's core personality. He was a soft and gentle boy in need for parental love. In need of parental love. Amongst the known alters, there was Jack Wayne, who had control over David's telekinesis, and Cindy, who was in control of David's pyrokinetic powers. Karami wanted to help David get back to normalcy, but Wayne resisted Karami's effort to integrate them. After several attempts and numerous incidents, David was brought back to normalcy with the help of Charles Xavier. At some point, while faking being in a coma, David entered Charles' mind and visualized his dream of establishing a perfect harmony between humans and mutants. He proposed to kill Magneto to execute his dreams, but Charles profusely denied it. David went back in time and tried killing Magneto, but ended up killing his father, Charles Xavier. This set off a chain of events that ultimately led to the Age of Apocalypse. Legion possessed a huge list of known and unknown alters in his mind. His psionic abilities are massive, he could warp not only reality, but also make one. David deliberately made the Age of X. He had also managed to wipe out all of the Elder Gods of Limbo. David once removed himself from existence, he even made no one have any memory of him.
Mad Jim Jaspers. Created by Alan Moore and Alan Davis, Mad Jim Jaspers debuted in Daredevil's Comics, issue 7, published in July 1983. Not much is known about him, except that he was born and raised in Finchley, a district of North London, and that he was a part of the Conservative Party, representing Haslip West. He later became the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, and strongly opposed the existence of superhumans and mutants. However, he himself was an extremely powerful mutant with reality-warping capabilities. He also had connections with the Hellfire Club. Jaspers was immortal and his powers grew stronger with each use. He is insane and capable of destroying the multiverse. He could warp time and space and resurrect himself from death. He had full control over reality and can alter anything according to his whims. He had created a hurling android robot named the Fury to pursue his anti-superhero agenda. The Fury was responsible for killing Brian Braddock in the original Captain Britain. Proteus. Created by Chris Claremont and John Byrne, Kevin McTaggart, aka Proteus, made his first comic book appearance in X-Men issue 119, published in December 1978. He was born to the mutant expert Moira McTaggart and an abusive father Joe McTaggart. Frustrated by her husband's torture, Moira left with the secret of being pregnant. After birth, Kevin was unstable and he was confined to a cell in a mutant research facility on Muir Island. Due to a battle between Magneto and the X-Men, the lab security was breached. As Kevin's cells got damaged, his remaining body burned out, and he remained in the form of energy looking for a new host. When a man approached to destroy the lab, he possessed the man. He kept looking for a powerful host and tried possessing Polaris and Jean Grey, which he failed. He then possessed one of the multiple man's bodies and escaped. He went on to possess his father's body, and when he finally found him, the X-Men tried opposing. However, it was too late as he succeeded in possessing Joe's body, but while battling the X-Men, Joe's body was all burned out. Colossus then slayed the Proteus, and his energy scattered all over Scotland. But he was not dead yet. And hired a woman named Erica Benson whose son could absorb energies. They wanted to use the kid to absorb the energies of Proteus. The X-Force, New Warriors, Moira McTaggart, and other mutants opposed the process, but they all failed. Gilbert's body exploded and gave birth to the entity that contained both Gilbert Benson and Kevin McTaggart. This entity was the new Proteus. He later killed himself after he realized that reality was incompatible. When dead, Proteus just maintained a low energy form and never really went out of existence. He had once brought Krakow back to life and later became a member of the Five, a group consisting of reality warpers set on a mission to resurrect dead mutants. He even brought Richter and Rockslide back to life. Existing in an energy form with the ability to possess powerful beings, Proteus is surely one of the potential mutants to surpass the Omega level. Conclusion so we have finally come to the end of the video, and we hope you have liked our content. The new set of power levels shown by the mutants is reaching new heights. Reality warping, resurrecting, traveling through space-time, creating pocket dimensions, and whatnot. There are many Omega level mutants, and soon there will be innumerable beyond the Omega level. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like, and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, and be safe. Thanks everyone.